Greetings, folks. This is Thursday, March 21st, 2019. It's late night, and so I'm Tom Wine Weaver, and this is a late night edition of my commentary. Of course, I found something else I have to talk about. Now, I don't know whether YouTube is going to allow this or not, but we'll see. Um, okay, I, I've been seeing, I saw videos and I've, and I looked up articles about people wanting Representative Omar out of Congress. I found some articles that I'm probably, that I'm going to read to you. This is from, uh, and I'm, I'll give you the link, uh, also. This is from the Daily Caller. Where's the Daily Caller from? <laughs> okay, it's entitled, Minnesota Democrats reportedly want Ilhan Omar out. And she blames Trump. Now, she might, I think she might be wrong about that, but we'll see. Okay, this is what the article says. Democratic Minnesota Republic, Republican Representative <laughs> Ilhan Omar blamed Donald Trump President Donald Trump on Sunday after reports that members of the Minnesota Democratic Party are considering removing her from congressional office for her repeated anti-Semitic statements. I'm sorry, Mr. Trump, Omar tweeted in response to the reports. I'm for real. You can't Muslim ban us from Congress. Minnesota Democrats are reportedly dismayed that Omar has made a string of bigoted comments about Jews which have received massive condemnation from both sides of the aisle. Consequently, members of the state party are looking for someone to contest her nomination in 2020 and run a different candidate in her place. Rather than blaming the Minnesota Democrats, Omar focused the backlash on Trump's 2017 executive order, which has been referred to as a Muslim ban. The executive order suspended U.S. entry of those whose counties do not meet adjudication standards under, under uh, federal immigration law for 90 days and included exceptions on a case-by-case -case basis. I think they mean countries, whose countries do not meet adjudication standards. I think. Okay. Omar, along with fellow Democratic Representative Rashid T. <laughs> I'll just call her Miss T. Of Michigan, became America's first Muslim Congress women when they were sworn into office in January. Both Congresswomen's time in office has been embroiled in allegations of anti-Semitism. And, like I said, I'm going to give you the link. You can read the rest of it on your own. Now, article number two. This is from the Jerusalem Post. I'm sure you can't complain about this one. <laughs> it was, uh, it was uh, posted... How do you know it's a one? It just says here it's a one-minute read. You don't know how slow I read, people. <laughs> it was uh, posted on March the 20th, 2019. Okay, that was just yesterday. All right, and the article is entitled, uh, Laurie Cadoza Moore Lashes Out at Ilhan Omar Again Hypnotized Congress. And the subsection says Americans will not tolerate any Semitism, whether delivered from a Christian nationalist, a member of the KKK, or an Islamicist. All right. The article goes on. Evangelical Christian leader Lori Cardoza Moore. I've encountered her before, didn't I? <laughs> uh, she has put out new statements against Congresswoman. Ilhan Omar following a decision this week by Fox News to suspend Judge Jeanine Pirro for challenging the freshman lawmaker. Pirro's justice with, just, justice with Judge Jeanine was put on hold after she questioned Omar's allegiance to America. Americans will not tolerate anti-Semitism whether delivered from a Christian nationalist, a member of the KKK, or an Islamist 
Cardoza Moore said in a statement, uh, Ilan Omar is waging an unholy war to sanitize anti-Semitism and we, the people, will not tolerate her veiled anti-Semitic threats. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. I'll give you one more paragraph. Cardoza Moore is the head of a nonprofit organization proclaiming justice to the nations, which works to educate Christians about their biblical responsibility to stand with their Jewish brethren and Israel. PJTN last month began disseminating a petition to have Omar removed from Congress. So far, tens of thousands of people have signed it. All right. Enough of that. <laughs> These people, they're a bunch of liars, folks. Now, I have had, I've, I've stated over and over and over again. I have, I have taught, been teaching people what anti-Semitism is. It simply means you are against the lineage of Shem. That's what the word means. All right. And that, and and the fact is, Arabs and Muslims, some of them are in the lineage of Shem. So if you're anti-Semite, you're against Arabs and Muslims. Modern day Israel is not Semite. And I, I, I've, I've gone into that before. I'm not going to do it again. It might get me banned from YouTube. <laughs> I, don't want that. Um, I still want to do some craziness here. Okay. So, these, you know, if you follow the Bible, Okay, I'm, I'm going to say this one more time. Galatians chapter 3. Christ is the seed of Abraham, not Israel. That's what the Bible teaches. It doesn't teach anything of the sort. It doesn't teach what these people are teaching. These people are lying. Proclaiming biblical responsibility to stand with the Jewish brethren of Israel. Well, what about the biblical responsibility to stand with Christ? Oh, jeez. They are not my Jewish brethren. And Israel, well, I, I've said enough about Israel. I'm not going to say anymore because, you know, one of these days, I'm. <laughs> somebody's going to complain about it again. Okay. However, on the other hand, this was uh, posted uh, March 6, 2019 in the Middle East Monitor, okay? It's entitled, in open letter, Jewish Americans come out in support of Ilhan Omar. Jewish Americans, do you hear that? This is what the article says. American Jews, including prominent figures like Naomi Klein, have signed an open letter in support of Minnesota Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. The letter states that she has been falsely accused of anti-Semitism and that there was nothing anti-Semitic about calling out the noxious role of the American Israel Public Affairs Committee in American politics. It went on to say that the pro-Israel lobby has played an outsized role in producing nearly unanimous congressional support for Israel and slammed APAC and other lobby groups, including the National Rifle Association, the Fossil Fuel Lobby, and the anti-democratic legislative influence on U.S. politics. The letter finished by saying, we thank Ilan Omar for having the bravery to shake up the congressional taboo against criticizing Israel as Jews with a long tradition of social justice. Now remember, these are Jews. As Jews with a long tradition of social uh, justice and anti-racism, APAC does not represent us and called on other Jews to sign the letter. Omar has faced huge backlash after calling out APAC, including facing accusation of anti-Semitism from both Democrats and Republicans. 
floor action against her by Nancy Pelosi and disturbing posters at a Republican event linking her to 9-11 attacks. The charge of anti-Semitism comes after Omar said that the Republican Party's threat against her and Palestinian American Congresswoman Rashid T. for criticizing Israel was all about the Benjamins, baby, in reference to money alleged pay, allegedly paid to the party and its members to support Tel Aviv. When he, when she was asked to clarify who is paying members, she cited APAC, which was obviously boasted up which has uh, previously boasted about all its financial influence in U.S. politics. All right. Uh, that we're t- <laughs> so we have a war of words going on here. There are people who are in support, and there are th- these are Jewish people. They are in support. And there are other Jewish people in support of uh, Miss Omar. The only people that are not supposed uh, that, that are against her are people who are owned by the pro-Israel lobby. And that is, I think, what the problem is. I think, I, I don't know if Donald Trump is responsible for any of this or not. But I'm believing that pro-Israel lobbyist probably went to the Democratic leadership of the Democratic Party in Washington, D.C. and said, you got to get rid of her. And so they sent a message down to the Minnesota Democratic Party and said, you got to get rid of her. That's why they're looking for somebody to take her place. Now, did Donald Trump have anything to do with it? I don't know. I really don't know. But I believe that the pro, see, these, these Israel pro lobbies are everywhere. They've got their tentacles in Hollywood, in, uh, in the media, in newspapers. I mean, you name it. They've got their tentacles everywhere. They are the globalist threat that President Kennedy warned us about. And we've done nothing about it. We, we now, we still must heed President Kennedy's warning. But we're not doing it. Our Congress, our presidents, they have been succumbed to money and power from Israel. And I... I I'm grateful to Miss Omar for opening this door. Now, people of Minnesota, listen up. Listen up very carefully. If you do this based on so-called anti-Semitism, I mean, there might be other issues out there that you might decide she's not for you. I don't know. But this issue, if you oust her for this, when I go to a grocery store, a hardware store, or any place else, and I find something made in Minnesota, I will not buy it. It's as simple as that. In fact, I'm, I'm probably, I, I'm probably going to be more happy to buy China. <laughs> Because it seems like American businesses are going against this lady. And if they do, I may just go ahead and buy China. (laughs) All right. Um, I think it's interesting. You know, she has people against her. She has a lot of people for her. And she's got Jewish people for her. What does that tell you, folks? American Jews do not support Israel. Some do, probably. But there's a lot of them that don't. The only only reason 
most people don't know anything about that is because our media hasn't covered it. But American Jews have have come together, I don't know how many times, protesting what Israel was doing to Palestine. But our media doesn't cover it. But it's happened. Okay. Well, I, I've gone overboard again. I, I might as well just forget about trying to aiming for a five-minute commentary. It's no, It hasn't happened in a long time. So, Oh, once again, I had to turn off my mic so I could cough. All right. Well, folks, I support this lady in this issue. Uh, She said a few things that I don't like, but I'm not going to go into that unless it's becoming law. I mean, I think I seen, well, I'm not, I don't remember. I'm just not, I'm not going to say it. I, I, I think I seen her. Or was it, uh, it might have been Cortez that talked about universal health care. And my, uh, my, my question for that, who in the world's going to pay for it? Of course, the American taxpayers are going to pay for it. Anyway, okay. Well, Representative Omar, I hope is not out. I hope she continues to speak about our government and how they have been bought by pro-Israel lobbies. Thank you for your time.